Good afternoon, everyone. I am Praise Benson, a junior digital marketing executive here at FutureSoft. You're welcome to today's Launch and Learn session. Launch and Learn is a bi-weekly program where each staff gets to train people on topics relating to our industry. If today is your first time joining us, you're welcome. Today, Praise Benson, a junior digital marketing executive, will be facilitating this session on the topic, developing a winning social media strategy and campaign in 2024. Kindly mute your mic as we continue with the session. And if you have questions to ask as the session goes on, kindly drop them in the chat and they will be addressed by praise after his presentation. Thank you for your cooperation. All right, welcome once again. So today's topic is on developing winning social media strategies and campaigns in 2024. Here's um, a session overview. We'll look at the current social media landscape. We'll consider the importance of social media marketing in 2024. We will look at the key trends that are shaping social media strategies in 2024. We'll also learn how to set clear social media objectives so as to um, maximize our success, our, our, the success of our social media efforts in 2024, we'll also learn how to understand our audience to ensure that um, our, our social media marketing endeavors actually reach the right target audience, the right people we are trying to reach with, with our content and every other thing. We'll also discover key performance indicators that are relevant to your social media goals in 2024, how you can go ahead to track those metrics after you have put out um, your content after you have um, gone into social media marketing, you need to analyze and know what worked, you know, what needs to be optimized for subsequent um, marketing uh, processes. We'll also look at um, how to develop a winning social media content strategy. Content strategy is very, very important in social media marketing because you need to reach people then how do you reach them what content resonates best with them we have to discuss we have to learn this how you can tell all your content to reach the right audience and ensure that it resonates with them we'll also look at how we can um, gain an analytics and reporting in social media marketing all right so going further we'll begin with a quote from um, a marketing strategist and best-selling author jay said success in social media is not about the platform but it is about crafting a compelling narrative that resonates with your audience and elevates your brand above the digital noise so this um would simply mean that it's not enough just to be present on social media platform it is not your presence alone on social media platform that guarantees your success merely having a presence on facebook you know twitter linkedin linkedin um instagram or any other platform will not automatically translate into achieving your marketing goals so your success would depend on what you do with the presence you have on social media so success, successful social media marketing involves understanding your target audience, understanding them intimately, how, you know, what resonates best with them. So um, knowing what captivates them, what challenges they are facing and what they care about. So by developing a social media strategy that is tailored with your audience in mind, you can definitely be sure of achieving high success rate in your in your social media marketing endeavors it will help you to build stronger connections it will help you to you know foster engagement and ultimately drive the desired actions such as maybe purchases if that was the the, the action you needed you know or it could be maybe brand loyalty so it is not just enough to be available on social media it's not just enough to have a presence on social media but what you do with your presence really, really, really matters. And at the end of the day, the result will be that it will elevate your brand. You know, there are so many, if I should use the word, there, there's so much noise on the digital space. Everyone wants to gain attention. Everyone wants to be heard. So how do you then elevate your brand? It is by, you know, carefully uh, um, strategizing and putting every, um, dotting your I's and crossing your T's to ensure, yes, to ensure that you reach the right target audience. 
All right, so let's consider an overview of the current social media landscape. So it's important to understand that social media is not a one size fits all space. It's important to understand that different social media platforms have their, their unique characteristics. It is not what you do for a particular platform will not you know, do well on another platform because different these platforms are, 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 are you know they are being programmed on different algorithms a whole lot of factors matter to um what post will rank based on what platform so you know we will have uh, we have facebook facebook which is known for its large user base and we have instagram that's visually driven everything on instagram is about your visuals how compelling it is it is and then we have twitter the real where we have real time conversations you know if you want to take um the strategy you're using for instagram to twitter you 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 discover that it may not work as much as it it would because Firstly, Twitter, we know it, it's characterized by brevity. Everything has to be short. No time for, you know, the long narrative that we will bring up maybe on LinkedIn or on, on, on Facebook. Twitter, that's its unique um, um, characteristic, its unique feature. And then we have LinkedIn, the professional network. So, uh, yeah, professional platform. So in case you want to reach professionals or you want to position your, yourself as an authority in your industry, yeah, LinkedIn is definitely that platform. So what may work? On, uh, on Facebook, you know, we have times where people come to celebrate, they just post uh, photos, oh, I, I had a weekend at this particular location. You may not do that on LinkedIn because LinkedIn is sort of a professional space and it's it is it is expected that we limit, you know, our, our activities to the professional setting. And then we have TikTok where creative content, video short form videos are trending. You will not bring up, um, you know, maybe text based post on, on TikTok and expect it to thrive. So it is, social media is not a one size fits all space. Every platform has its own characteristics. And then over time, we've discovered that new content have evolved like stories, sort of um, ephemeral um, content, yes. Content that just lasts for 24 hours, that's stories. Um, this was initially pioneered by Snapchat and then platforms like Instagram and Facebook adopted them. And then we now have the rise of short form videos on platforms like TikTok, um, which signifies a shift from uh, a shift towards more concise and visually engaging content. These are the trends that, you know, govern social media landscape at this time. Let's go ahead. Social media has also become a global stage where conversations transcend geographical boundaries. So through social media, the conversation you're having in Lagos can reach America, you know, with ease. Okay, let's take, uh, for example, the, the just completed AFCON, discover that all, 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 all African countries, you know, were engaging in the conversation. Those that, those that were active on Twitter, you discover all the, you know, all the phones, all the banter, you know, all those kind of stuff that happened on Twitter. It's, that's the beauty of social media. It, it 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 creates that global stage where everybody comes together, irrespective of your, geog your, your geog geographical location. So it serves as a, as, as a catalyst for social movement, enabling individuals to raise awareness, advocate for change, and amplify their voices. We would consider the answers process uh, protest rather for an example. We all remember how it how it happened maybe just maybe it, it could be that maybe just one person posted you know his experience with police brutality and before you know it other people came and shared their experiences shared their experiences and before you before the next thing that happened that conversation turned into a social movement that interested every other person and it, it, you know, we now saw people on the street advocating for change, saying these things ought not to be. So this is what social media, you know, stands for in 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 the present day reality. It gives that global audience, it gives that global stage for everyone to, you know, aid their views, advocate for change, and amplify their voices. And then we'll also discover that e-commerce features on platforms like. Instagram and Facebook have become integral part of the user experience, where someone can just go to a business um, page on Instagram and just, you know, striking conversation. Okay, I want to get this. Is this product available? You know, this is the trend that is 
the physical store before you can get um, a product. You can stay at the confines of your home, the comfort of your, your room, you know, and get whatever you want. The integration of these business function functionalities within a social media platform has transformed them into robust ecosystems. Let's consider um, the importance of social media marketing in 2024. Yeah, um, social media serves as a bridge, what we call a bridge for businesses to foster conversation, you know, build relationships and actively participate in the lives of their target audience. So um, it, social media will help businesses in 2024 get involved in customer service you know where customers can come in make inquiries share their complaints if they have and then receive swift um responses without having to go to a physical location you just imagine maybe um maybe your you were you're trying to make a, a transaction on your banking app maybe you got debited while the other person was not credited you do not necessarily have to step into a banking hall to go and lay your complaints to say okay i was debited and and all of this you can just sit down in the comfort of your room depending on how um you know the response system of that bank is that digital marketing um, um, department how active they are on social media you can stay there and you know your your queries resolved whatever error was there would be resolved instantly so social media has that expansive reach and audience engagement helping businesses to to connect real time with their customer you know participate in the lives of their target customers so we discovered that in 2024 the potential reach of platforms like facebook instagram twitter and linkedin and other imaging network with networks or platforms will ensure that businesses can you know engage with a diverse and global audience the second thing, um, the second importance of social media marketing we will experience in 2024 is that um, we it, there will be dynamic customer engagement. Yes, I had highlighted that in the first point as well. Customer engagement on social media will extend beyond transactions. It will not just be the regular transaction, transaction. It will encompass the creation of interactive and responsive brand community. So real-time conversations will be first started in 2024 you know by the help of social media marketing brands will actively respond to customer queries and engage with user generated content you know it's possible that you have brand mentions someone might come to mention your brand and say okay i was satisfied by the customer service delivery of brand xyz and so i i recommend this brand you know those sort of um, mentions can help elevate your brand and you can engage in that user generated content or maybe someone comes to buy a product from your from your store and then goes back to wear that product if it's a wearable you, you know store maybe a, a fashion attire a dress you know just wear it and snap and, and mentions your brand i got this from brand XYZ and I'm I'm so satisfied with it, its quality and all of that. Your brand can definitely go and engage in that conversation, you know, creating that cost that sort of customer engagement with it. And then we discover that in 2024, more de decision make decision, we discover that decision making will be based on data. You know, you're not just be assuming things. Data will play a bigger role in social media marketing strategies. There are analytics tools that will ena enable businesses to effectively measure their campaign performance, understand their audience behaviors, and refine their strategies for optimal results in 2024. So we want to um, explore the trends that are shaping social media strategies in 2024 what are the trends maybe you you must have discovered it yourself already but one of it is that um there is a, a rise in in the in there's a rise of short form videos you know prior to to um the emergence of tiktok tiktok has really brought up this um the possibility for short form videos so we also have um instagram reels Instagram reels, they keep emphasizing that content should be short, quick, and engaging. You know, there are so much, there, there is so much noise in the digital space. And we discover that from a research that the the average attention span of 
an online user is sort of five seconds. So if you're not able to capture the attention of your of your audience in five seconds, you're definitely going to miss them. You're definitely going to miss out of that conversation. So how then can you position your 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 brand? to be engaging that people see your content and they want to know more about what you're doing they want to get more involved you see people want um you know shareable and snackable videos stuff that capture their attention people really are not concerned about reading long stuff long stuff long stuff nowadays except there are people that are really intentional about you know learning um we saw we saw an advert of of apple company where they were talking about um, their ESG strategies, what, what they have been able to accommodate or, or what they have been able to achieve, you discover that if they were to put all those achievements into writing, it would take a whole lot of pages for them to achieve that. But within five, five minutes, you know, they were able to communicate their stand, their ESG position, how they have been able to, you know, put an end to certain practices that do not really fit our planet so short form videos are a top uh yeah short form videos um you know is very relevant presently in social media strategy so if you've not yet leveraged um social media um short form videos for your social media strategy or your content i would really encourage you that you get to explore you get to leverage this for your brand it will give you a whole lot of engagement and it will position you better as people will want to engage more with your with your content and also ensure that it is engaging it is visually appealing yeah um the second trend is live streaming live streaming um in 2024 businesses will leverage live streaming for various purposes from question and answer sessions product launches to behind the scene glimpses of you know their production the real time interaction of live streaming fosters engagement and allows brands to showcase their transparency, which at the end of the day enhances the overall user experience. So I would love to, you know, point us to some of the brands that um, leveraged live streaming in 2023 for their social media processes. First, we 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 have Paystack. So Paystack used Twitter spaces and YouTube Live. They hosted their question and answer session with experts on financial literacy. So you see, it gave room for live engagement because people, people were able to in, interact live, you know, real time with the brand, asking questions and getting immediate feedback. We we all know a lot by, by Wema that um, Wema Bank's um, banking app. So when they, they, when they were about to launch that product, they went live on Instagram Live, they partnered with some financial influencers for their live discussion on budgeting, investing, and how to use their app. So you see, instead of just putting out content there, okay, guys, we have a new app, use this and save yourself the stress of going to the bank. They had to come train people on how to use this app. Imagine if people had you know, questions on how to navigate that app, they will get immediate response from that, you know, from that live stream, from that live stream, yes. And the other one would be Indomie. We all know Indomie, Indomie noodles. So they, they went on Instagram Live and on TikTok. They partnered with some food bloggers and chefs for live cooking demonstrations using Indomie. So they, they also hosted live challenges and contests, which encouraged their viewers to create their own Indomie recipe. On a normal, if they were just to talk about... um talk about their Indomie stuff by, by, uh, by way of post, maybe they wouldn't have gotten engagement, but they now brought up this um, live stream stuff where people hosted their challenges real time. Uh, the idea was to create your own Indomie recipe. How do you enjoy it? How do you enjoy it? So you see, it gave rise to customer engagement real time. So this is one of the trends that will matter a whole lot in 2024, social um, um, live, live streaming. So maybe if you have a business, you can also leverage this. You want to go into a product launch, you can leverage live streaming. But also discover the use of user-generated content. Um, businesses will also will, will do well. Businesses will thrive more when they are able to incorporate user-generated content into their strategy. It will not just only amplify the brand reach, but it will also foster a sense of community and loyalty. Um, you know, 
beyond you know the the brand loyalty and the reach user user generated content also serves as a testament to the brand's impact on its audience if you have impacted your audience life positively if they love your your customer service delivery definitely they should want to speak of your brand you know on social media so imagine you have a brand mention like i stated earlier this will help people know that okay this brand has excellent customer delivery they have quality product i can always bank on them to get my stuff right we also have conversational spaces and audio content this one is um very practical and i think we've had some experience with twitter spaces so the emergence of these spaces such as twitter spaces signals a shift towards audio centric content the rise of audio content provides a new avenue for brands to connect with audiences in a more intimate and authentic manner. So in 2024, businesses will explore the potential of hosting discussions, interviews, and interactive sessions through these platforms. Um, last year, yes, we also discovered during the electoral processes in Nigeria that we had a whole lot of Twitter spaces, Twitter conversations, people were hosting, you know, having interviews with the candidates from various parties. So these candidates were able to share their views and you know interact perfectly on their 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 strategies and how they hope to you know move Nigeria forward. This is an example of how um, conversational spaces will work in two thousand and twenty-four. So let's go ahead to consider how to set smart objectives for your social media campaign. I said that this will be a highlight of this class because at the end of the day, you don't just want to you know wish to get things happen you have to go down deep you have to break these things into details you know out into actionable point how you hope to achieve it at the end of the day so let's consider how you can set um smart objectives for your social media marketing campaigns in 2024 so we discovered that most brands want to do more if, if you ask them what do you want to achieve with your social media marketing efforts you may hear people say, I want to reach a global audience. I want to, I want to, I want to have customer engagement. But the, the, the real question is, how do you want to get this done? How do you want to achieve this at the end of the day? It's not just about wishing to get it done. What are the strategies and how have you been able to break it down into actionable points? So defining smart objectives is a strategic process that helps businesses and organizations create clear and achievable goals for their social media marketing campaigns. So now the SMART, SMART is actually an acronym that stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound, meaning your objective, your goal must be specific. You must be, you, you must be able to measure the, the impact, the effect of your, of your campaigns. You, it must also be achievable. It must also be relevant to your broad um, um, organization goals, and it must be time bound. So let's take this in in bits. Let's discuss this in bits. First, we said it has to be specific. You have to clearly define the specific goal. Instead of saying, "I want to, I want to, I, I want to have a, a, a strong social media presence," that's too large. It's not. You you have to narrow it down. How do you want to have a strong social media presence? Is it website traffic? Do you want to, you know, have more people visit your website, or do you want to have more engagement on your pages what exactly is the goal you want to achieve you must specify what needs to be achieved and yes so for example we could say um, we want to increase website traffic we can refine this goal website traffic to say this is this is the example of a smart goal now we will explain it later we say in instead of saying increase website traffic you can say increase organic website traffic by 20 percent in the next three months this is definitely a, a smart goal because it is specific we know that website traffic you can you can have a paid a paid promotion that will drive people to your website you know within three days depending on your budget and you will achieve it so how, this is where the specification comes in. Is it an organic website traffic or is it a paid website traffic? So you say, I, I want to increase organic website traffic by 20% in the next three months. Going ahead into the M, which is being measurable, you must be able to establish concrete metrics to measure your success. You should use quantifiable data such as percentages, numbers, or maybe monetary values. 
So in our example above, we saw that the measurable aspect was 20%, 20% increase in organic website traffic. Maybe your brand, you, your goal might be that, okay, I want to have a turnover of 1 million within two months, like, especially if it's, if it's a startup brand. That's, yeah, that's measurable, but we, we'll look at the next phase, which is achievable. How achievable is it with the present reality as a startup brand? How do you hope to raise 1 million era in two months, right? Okay, so let's go ahead. Okay, so after making sure that it is measurable, you have to ensure that your objectives are realistic and attainable. The truth is, if it is not achievable, at the end of the day, you feel disappointed, you feel frustrated that I put in all this effort and then I not, you know, reach uh, reach my target because it was not achievable. You were just making a very large right imagination if i should use that word so you have to assess the resources available budget your time frame available to determine if the goal is feasible so setting unrealistic targets like i said can lead to frustration and decreased motivation you may you can like like this one was said um 20 percent they could possibly have said we want to have organic um, website increase in organic website traffic by 100 percent in three months that would be too large to maybe achieve within that short time but they had to narrow it down make it achievable 20 percent you you can picture it and know that yes within three months it is possible to achieve 20 percent increase in organic website traffic At the end of the day it has to be relevant as well you must align your objectives with the overall business strategy and goals. Ensure that achieving the digital marketing objective contributes directly to the broader business success. You don't just want to put in all the effort and it will bring just result in one area alone. At the end of the day, your, the result in one aspect must affect the entire um, you know, organization's goal and business strategy. And then you have to ensure that it is time bound. Don't just say, I want to achieve it in 2024. Although it's time that that may look time bound, but it's too, it's too wide. 2024 has 365 or 366 days. How within this term, 366 days, when do you hope to achieve this? You have to define a specific time frame for achieving the objectives. This will add a sense of urgency and it will help in measuring progress. For instance, like the goal we, we, we looked at earlier, it said um, um, achieve 20% increase in organic website traffic within the next three months. That, that is very practical. That's time bound. It's possible to do this at the end of the day. All right, so I have a little task for the purpose of this training. You know, maybe you're coming across this video online and you want to try out something. Um, I would love that with this understanding you have about setting smart goal, that you try out something with your business. Just try it out. Try to um, set a goal for your business. Ensure that it is specific, like we said, measurable, achievable, relevant to your overall business strategy, and then it is time bound. All right. So moving forward, we will consider how you can understand your audience. Like I said, how do you, you know, put up a strategy without considering the people that will benefit from this stuff at the end of the day? It's obvious that social media is not for you. So you must be able to put up stuff that resonates with your brand. With your content, you shouldn't bring up content that, you know, maybe you feel like posting. You should, it should, it should be something that your brand, your audience feel like hearing or reading or listening to. It's not about you at the end of the day. It's about them because it is not you that will patronize your business. It is your audience that will patronize. So how then can you understand your audience in 2024? So we will talk about social media audience segmentation. So understanding your audience is not a one-time endeavor. It is an ongoing process. It will always continue. If you do it in January, maybe you want to do it by uh, uh, quarterly, the first quarter, you should also try to understand the be behavior of your, of your audience in the past quarter so that you redefine your social media strategy for the next quarter. So by, conti by continually refining your understanding based on data and feedback, you can adapt your social media strategies to remain relevant and compelling in the eyes of your audience. Now you have to break down your audience into demographic segments such as age, 
you know, the gender, location, and occupation. This segmentation will enable you to tailor your content to ensure that it resonates with the specific subset of your audience. If we talk about age, we know um, there, there's, there, there are age groups in social media will have maybe the 20 to 25 or there about 25 to 30 and there about. We will have Gen Zs. The truth is that what resonates with the younger audiences may not resonate with the older demographic. What resonates with the older demographics may not re uh, resonate with the younger demographic. So you don't just put up one thing and hope to reach everybody in the same way. You discover that your um, the younger demographic may prefer visually appealing con and concise content. You know, no young person really wants to sit down and read and read and read stuff. They want, you know, easy stuff they can share, engage with the trend and all of that, like all the short form videos we talk about on TikTok. That's what the younger demographics want to do. And at the same time, the older demographics may not engage in sort of those stuff because they really may not have time for all of those to get. So the, the older demographics may appreciate more detailed and informative materials. You know, they want to have resources from you, learn more from you and all of that. So you have to tailor it into, you know, demographic segments so that you can reach people with the right content that they need to have. And then you discover for the, for the age or for the gender, certain products, certain services or messages may resonate differently with males and females. Supposing you're, you have, um, what is it now? You have a bag, yeah, a bag um, business. You're selling, you're into the sales of female bags. You know that male, male, you know, the male gender may not necessarily need bags, except they just want to surprise their partners at the end of the day. That's when they will now consider maybe, okay, let me just look for a store, an online brand that is into the sales of quality bags. But you know, Ladies, naturally, they will be naturally attracted to, to your brand because that is what resonates with them. Every day, you know, it's part of their fashion. They will always want to have a bag for their dressing. So you discover that for the gender, you your, your target audience would do well if you are able to target the female gender rather than targeting the male gender. And um, location specific, you also discover that certain events relate more with people in different locations. What we are talking about currently in Nigeria may not be what um, um, people in America are talking about. So you have to, you know, group all of these, segment your audience into locations so that you know who to reach with a particular content at the end of the day. So you also have to understand their interests, their values, their be the behaviors of your audience. You know, that way we now talk about the psych psychographic segmentation, which allows you to create content that aligns with the lifestyle and preferences of your target audience. So psychographic segmentation will have to do with the hobbies, the passion, and the interests that captivate your audience. So whether it's outdoor activities, whether it's about technology, whether it is art or specific hobbies, crafting content that speaks directly to this interest will establish a more meaningful conversation and connection that will increase the likelihood of your engagement. So you, you beyond the demographics, you also have to come down to the psychographic segmentation. We will have to discover the, 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 the behaviors of your, of, your, of your audience, their likes, their hobbies, what they are most interested in. If someone is interested about football, you going to talk to the person about food will not really make sense to the person, but you discover that the, the moment you mention football, that person will naturally engage and relate perfectly well with what you're trying to say. So let's um, look at how we can leverage insights for social media strategy. How can you get, you know, use the insights you have gotten from your social media activities to refine your social media strategy? The first will be strategic scheduling of your posts. So scheduling your, your social media posts strategically based on peak engagement times will help you engage more with your audience when they are most online. So you discover that maybe if you're using a tool like um, Facebook site, um, Facebook will always recommend to you when your audience are available, you know, they are online, they are active on specific days. 
it may be different for today. It may be different for tomorrow. Today, they may be active by 2 p.m. Tomorrow, they may be active by 8 a.m. The next by 6 p.m. You know, this will help you know when to send out your content so that you don't send it when they are not active. And then by the time they are online, they cannot get to see your post again. So you have to discover this strategic scheduling using um, analytics tools, um, sort like the Facebook Insight or Meta Business Suite. Like I have said, we'll go into this more in details later on. And then you have to also know how to tailor your content to match the preferred format of your audience. If visual content receives higher engagement, you have to prioritize using you know, visual content. And if your audience leans towards informative articles, more like the professional network um, like LinkedIn, it means you have to also um, you know, feed them with such articles, focus on creating and crafting in-depth and valuable written content for them. You have to personalize. If it is for the Gen Z, you know, videos will always do for them. Just give them maybe 30 seconds video or they're about, they will engage. Even if it's five minutes and it's, it's interesting, they will engage more than going to read. And then you have to be consistent in posting. Consistency fosters anticipation and your audience is more likely to engage regularly when they know when to expect your content. So, um, you know, posting today and then you're no longer available the next day to post. It will make your 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 audience maybe feel disappointed because you're not available. Maybe they know that on certain days, maybe let's say on Friday, that you post informative articles and they come to your platform on Friday, maybe by 10 a.m. to see the next content you have, yet you're not available. They will feel disappointed at the end of the day. So you have to be consistent in posting. And when we talk about consistency, it, it's not about causing information fatigue. As a matter of fact, we recommend that um, the, the maximum um, posting frequency in a day should be two times maximum because you don't want to create information fatigue at the end of the day, always being in front of your audience. They may get tired. This is why most brands have um, a, a whole lot of unsubscriber rates. You know, today you are seeing five people unsubscribe from your maybe your newsletter or you lost maybe 10 followers because you're, you're, you're this, they consider it as disturbance. So we recommend one to two times posting frequency for brands on social media daily. So being consistent does not mean that you have to be posting and posting and posting and becoming a news and before your audience. And then we have we talk about the adaptability. Behavioral patterns are not static. They will always change at any regular time. So you have to regularly monitor and adapt your strategy based on evolving trends in how your audience engages with your content. So like I said, if you discover that they are most active by 8 p.m., you have to adapt to when they are available to you know, engage with your content. Instead of saying, I must post by 10 a.m., I have to post by 10 a.m., and then you're not having any engagement at the end of the day. All right, so how then can we identify key performance indicators, key performance indic indicators so that after all your social media endeavors can be able to track what know what worked and what did not work. So understanding and leveraging the right key performance indicators is paramount for evaluating the success and impact of social media efforts. So now let's explore, you know, key metrics that are pivotal to in measuring social media performance. Maybe you want to have engagement. You want people to engage on your post. What metrics would you likely track to know that people actually engage with the content you sent out? There will be the likes, there will be the shares and the comments. These are engagement metrics. So if you want to know how well people responded to the content you posted, you, you, you may not be interested in checking conversion rate. That's not the right metric for, you know, for that activity. The right metric would be the likes, the shares and the comments. So um, this metrics gauge the level of, in, of audience interaction with your content. Higher engagement indicates that your content is resonating well with your audience and that they are contributing to a more significant online conversation. So if someone actually stops to like your video or your post, somebody actually stops to share your comment or your, your post or even drop a comment, that means 
what they saw there was actually valuable to them and they want to be a part of the of it. Another metric you may want to track for your engagement metric may be the click-through rate. So click-through rate measures the percentage of users who clicked on a link in your post. Maybe you wanted people to register for your for, for a, a class or whatever. You want people to do a thing or go to your website and all of that. It is the click-through rate that will help you know how many people actually clicked on your on the link that you included in your post. We directed them to your website or a specific landing page. So it reflects the effectiveness of your call to action and the content relevance. We also have the reach and impression. This actually is for content visibility. You want to know how visible the content you shared was, how viral it went. You definitely have to track reach and impression. Likes, likes, shares, and comments won't be necessary for content visibility. So your reach quantifies the number of unique users emphasis on unique users who have encountered your content so it provides insight into the potential size of your audience now people get confused when we talk about reach and um impression so now your reach talks about unique users how many unique users came across your post i'll i'll make a, an example at the end after I've, I've spoken on impression so impression represents the top, total number of times your content is displayed content visibility so for example we are eight people on this call at the moment we are eight people on this call at the moment if we are to if this was to be a content on social media we want to calculate the reach we would say that this content actually reached eight unique users eight unique users because those are the people that are engaging currently or that have engaged with this particular content but among these eight users it could happen that um, one person gets to see a content twice or he gets to see a content 10 times within a day. That, that's when impression now comes in. So one person can create or generate 10 impressions on a particular post, but it's still the same user. It's still the same reach, one unique user that that content reached, but the person ended up seeing it up to 10 times. So for example, if these eight persons on this call now actually came across my content 10 times, you discover that the reach will be eight, but my impression will be eight. The same eight persons saw this post 10 good times. So that's how reach and impressions are calculated. And if you want to, you know, know your follower growth, want to know how much your how much followers you're gaining, you have to reach an impression may not be necessary you have to check how many new subscribe how many new followers have you gained over a specific period of time so you need to track the growth in your follower account which indicates the expanding reach of your brand and the size of your online community it also might, might in, it might also interest you to track your follower acquisition rate so this is a particular rate that you you know the rate at which you gain followers at over a period of time, it could be maybe five percent monthly. That that's the your follower acquisition rate, five percent. So that one is actually measured compared to follower count that you have to do head count. Okay, in February I had ten followers, but in in March I now have fifty followers. So you now say um forty new followers um were added in the month of March. That's follower count. But if it's follower acquisition rate, you may have to say like we had five percent increase in our follower rate. All right. So we will talk about the conversion rate. This is another important key performance indicator that you have to track. You, 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 you. Maybe we talked about the con the click through rate. You have put out a link, but it's not just about clicking the link. That's not the desired action at the end of the day. Maybe you want people to register for something, or you want people to um, um purchase something from your website. You have to actually track the conversion rate. It measures the percentage of users who completed a desired action, such as making a purchase or filling or filling out a form. So at the end of the day, out of 100 people that clicked on your link, how many people actually converted? How many people filled out the form? How many people you know, purchased the product from your brand? This is conversion rate. It could be that 100 people clicked it, and at the end of the day, maybe just 10 um, um took the desired action, that will be that you had 10% conversion rate. We'll also 
it may also interest you to track your brand sentiment and mentions. So your brand mentions men monitor the number of times your brand is mentioned on social media platforms. It will help you gauge your brand visibility and then your social, your, your user generated content. Imagine maybe um someone like I, I had given this example earlier, someone comes to your brand and is satisfied, com totally satisfied with your customer service delivery you know, and it goes on social media to say, hey guys, I found a new brand that is excellent in this and that. That's a brand mention. You may need to track it. And your sentiment analysis will evaluate the sentiment that is associated with your brand mention, whether it's positive, if it is negative, or if it is neutral. Now, if it is a positive um, um, feedback, you know that that's an advantage to you. But if it's a negative feedback, maybe someone goes to drag your brand on social media. Hey, I went to do this, and then this brand did this and did this. I'm very, very disappointed with this brand. You really need to, you know, analyze that and raise a quick response strategy to, so that that um you know negative feedback that negative sentiment will not escalate you know if it reaches more people that's a disadvantage to your brand because people will not trust your brand again at the end of the day so it's one it's it is important that you track you know your sentiment analysis and your brand mention and then video metric as video content are performing good this is better these days you may want to track you know your view count how many people actually viewed your, your video at the end of the day. It gives an indication of the popularity of your video. And you may want to know, okay, out of the one hour video, what was the average watch time? How, how long did people stay on the video? You may discover that your watch time for a one hour video could be 10 minutes. You will know, okay, out of 60 minutes, people only viewed for 10 minutes. Maybe they were not, they didn't find it interesting or something. But if you see that your watch time out of one as someone actually spent 50 minutes on your video, you definitely know that they found it worthy, right? They, it was engaging. It, it resonated well with them. So you may want to track that so that you know what content to create, how what sort of video to create the next time. It will, it will definitely inform your strategy. All right, so... What then is social media strategy without a content strategy? At the end of the day, it is content that you're always going to put up before your, your, your audience. So how do you create a winning social media content strategy? Let's just run through this. First, you have to articulate the objectives of your social media effort. What do you want to achieve? Is it brand awareness? Is it website traffic? This is what will determine you know, the kind of content that you're putting out. They define your um, social media objective. You need to foster community engagement. You know, like we said earlier, each goal must align with the overall business objective. So you have to establish key performance indicators that can be tracked and measured, providing insight into the success of your content strategy. You have to develop a content calendar that outlines the types of posts, you know, your posting frequency and your timing. Consistent posting builds anticipation and helps in maintaining an active and engaged audience. So you don't just want to wake up on Wednesday and you're racking your brain, oh, what content should I put out today? No, you will, that way you will, not be, you will not be consistent. So you create your content using content calendar ahead of time. Some brands choose to use um, Excel spreadsheet or maybe the Google sheet as we have now, but I think it's way easier to navigate using um, Google Doc or your Microsoft, yeah, Google Doc, because pe um, you know people can collaborate on the document at once. But all of this is, you know, it depends on you at, at the end of the day, your likes. But the ideal is that you create a content calendar ahead of time. By Monday or by Wednesday latest, your content, content calendar for the next week should have been available so that you know that you're prepared. If you need to review your content at the end of the day, you can definitely review it if, if it's not you know so good, if it is not so strong at the end of the day, it will give you that time to analyze it and create, you know, make updates as needed. You have to also utilize scheduling tools to plan and automate your post. It ensures a steady flow of content without the need of constant manual intervention. It could be that when you want to make your post, your phone had gone off or you're having a poor internet, you wouldn't be able to post in such situation. But if you had utilized a scheduling tool, um, you would have um, 
your content would have been published without your your being online, right? It doesn't even need you to be available before it's posted. If you schedule a post for 10 a.m. and maybe you're sleeping or you're doing all that, as so you must have even forgotten, that post will definitely be published by your social media platform by 10 a.m. without you needing to come, uh, without the need of you coming to do any further thing. Then you have to also create a diverse content mix. You don't have to rely solely on just one content type, you know, maybe images. You have to bring content content mix, your images, your video, your infographics, and text-based posts. You have to integrate this into your social media strategy so that you can resonate more, you can reach more, you have more engagement. Catering to different content preferences keeps the audience engaged. You know, you have to also bring in the power of storytelling. Create Foster a good connection through your narratives. A well-told story can resonate with your audience on a deeper level, and it will foster brand loyalty at the end of the day. And then you will also have to, for your content strategy, establish a consistent brand voice. You don't want to have, uh, sound professional today, and then tomorrow you come to sound casual, or the next tomorrow you are now sounding friendly. People have to know you for who you are, for what brand you are. If you are a professional brand, you have to your brand tone has to be professional. And if you, if your brand needs a friendly sort of tone, you have to be consistent. All your posts should have this sort of tone across board. So whether it's casual or conversational or formal or authoritative, you have to be consistent with it. And you may also want to maintain a visual, a visual identity, a cohesive and consistent visual identity, which will con uh, uh, consist your colors, your fonts, and your design element. One thing we know is that Coke, for example, will always be Coke because whenever you see a red, you a particular you know a shade of red you know that this is coke anytime you see coca cola on a yellow a yellow color definitely you you have to question like is this really coca cola so they have been able to you know bring up a cohesive a cohesive visual identity across board that whenever they come up you know that this is coca cola so visual consistency enhances your brand recognition. Like without without anybody even seeing your name, once they see your logo, they know okay, this is this is so 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 and so brand. So you have to establish a consistent brand voice and brand visual um a, a cohesive visual brand identity. And then finally, you will also need to regularly analyze the performance of your content using analytics tool. You have to know what works well, what needs adjustment, and you have to adapt your strategy accordingly. If you analyze and then you discover that um, your peak engagement time is always in the evening, maybe within 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., you have to adjust your posting time to 5 to 7 p.m., between 5 to 7 p.m., knowing that's when your audience are most active on social media. So yeah, analyzing your content strategy provides insight into strategy at the end of you may discover that the particular post performs better than other posts and you may see that other posts don't even have engagement at all you may need to drop that content that does not have engagement and replace it with something else that will you know give you more engagement how then do you tell all your content for different platforms like i said social media is not a one size fit all space how do you con uh, tell all your content to different platforms. First, you have to acknowledge the unique features of each platform. For instance, um, Instagram is visual centric. You know, Twitter demands brevity. You don't have to go there and be too long. LinkedIn tends to be sort of, uh, you know, to do well with professional content. You don't have to go and start telling people on LinkedIn, I went for a vacation, I had this, I went, I had this with my, you know, with my partner and all of that. That's not professional. You have to tailor your content to suit um, the demands of the particular platform you are on. So platforms like Instagram and Pinterest will um, thrive more on visual content. So you have to optimize your images, your videos for each platform specifications to ensure maximum visibility and appeal. So you may need to explore features like carousels or slideshows on platforms that support these. For example, LinkedIn supports um, the carousel feature. So instead of just randomly posting images that people may not be able to follow, they may end up mixing the first point for the second point. You may need to post carousel so that um, uh, it, it, it enables your storytelling process in a sequential manner you know, keeping your audience engaged. You'll also need to utilize hashtags strategically on platforms like Instagram and Twitter. Thank God for, um, you know, the emergence of AI. You could go to your AI and ask, okay, what are the trending 
hashtags trending and relevant hashtag for this content or for this industry. And it will give you real-time hashtag. Maybe if you use Google Bad or the recently updated Germany, right? It could give you real-time update on the trending hashtag. So you need to research and incorporate this to your, to your content in order to be sure that people discover your pop, your content ap appropriately. And then for platforms like LinkedIn and YouTube, you have to focus on keyword optimization. Um, our time is gone and I have to wrap up as soon as I can. You have to tailor your, your content with a more pro for on LinkedIn with a more professional and business oriented tone. And then Facebook allows for a casual and conversational tone. So you can engage with your audience through polls, quizzes and relatable content. Um, I'll just rush over this social listening and monitoring. Like I mentioned earlier on, you have to monitor your, your the sentiments around your brand. What are people saying? What How are the comments that are living? Are they negative? Are they positive? Or are they neutral? You have to analyze this. You have to be out there listening for when you, um, um, you know, people mention your brand. You know, social listening tools will enable your business to if, if drop on your competitors to help you know what your competitors are doing that are resonating well for them so that you can also do it well, you, you know, incorporate it to your strategy. Analyzing the social media activities of your competitors will help in benchmark, benchmarking performance, understanding industry trends, and identifying opportunities, which will help you to refine your strategies and position your brand more effectively. All right, so... Um, well, in the event of a crisis or a surge in negative sentiment, like I said earlier, social listening tools can serve as an early warning system. So the rapid identification of imaging issues will enable your business to respond proactively. There's a, there's a campaign that, um, is it McDonald's, if I'm correct with the name they brought out, they wanted to get people to talk about how their experiences with, um, the brand. They thought that that would turn out to be a positive, you know, campaign. People will talk, oh, I went this, I got my meat, I did this and all of that. But at the end of the day, people were complaining. It was a negative feedback they were getting, which took a negative toll on their brand. And they had to take down that um, campaign immediately across all social media platforms. So imagine that they were not available to track all those uh, uh, sentiments at that time. It would have escalated and, you know, affected their brand even more than it did at that point. So this is what social listening and social monitoring can do for your brand. So um, examples of social listening tools that you may want to, um, you know, utilize for your brand, please, this is not a means of promoting any brand whatsoever. It's just for the purpose of this um, training. Such uh, examples would be brand watch, you know, talk worker, mention falcon.io and Awario. You can choose to, you know, research more on these tools so that you know which one is best for you to utilize for your brand. And then finally, the last section, analytics and reporting in social media marketing. So analytics would involve the collection, the analysis and interpretation of data generated through social media platforms. So this data-driven approach empowers marketers, empower, will empower you as a brand, as a business owner to make informed decisions, optimize your strategy and align campaigns with overarching business goals. So metrics such as engagement rates, your reach, your impressions, your click-through rates, and conversation, uh, conversion rates, rather, will provide valuable insight into the effectiveness of your social media effort. So you have to analyze these metrics to gauge your performance and identify areas for improvement. So let's just take a look at some popular social media analytics tools. Um, the first would be Google Analytics. Although this is not exclusively a social media analytics tool, but it plays a crucial role in tracking website traffic that originates from social media channels. It will give you insight into your, your, into your user behavior, sorry about that, your conversions and the impact of social media on website performance. So you can use Google Analytics if you want to get data from your website to know how people are engaging with your website. We have Facebook Insight, I had mentioned this earlier. It is specific to um, the Facebook platform. Or we now have Meta Business Suite that is unique to Meta platform, that's Instagram and Facebook, where you can together have um, metrics from your Facebook pages or accounts and um, your Instagram account all displayed on one dashboard. So you don't have to toggle between Instagram and Facebook. You can all have it on Meta Business Suite. So that's it. We have Twitter analytics, unique 
on peculiar to Twitter, which will provide data on the tweet impression, engagement, and follower demographics. So you can assess the reach and impact of your tweet, identify popular content, and understand your audience interest. We have LinkedIn analytics. These are all, you know, um, specific to each of these platforms. LinkedIn analytics offers insight into post engagement, same with other brands for, uh, you know, platforms, follower demographics and page views. And we have Hootsuite analytics. Um, you know, this has capabilities along with the social media management feature. So you can definitely manage your social media platforms with Hootsuite instead of, you know, doing one, 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 one platform per time. This will bring together your Facebook, your Instagram, your X, or the formerly known Twitter, your LinkedIn, all your social media platform into one dashboard where you can manage it and gain that data from it all at the same time. And then um, we have Buffer, there's Buffer Analytics. So I want to take out time um, to talk about Buffer. Again, this is not a promotion um, um, you know, strategy for any brand. It's just for the purpose of this training that I'm bringing this in. And, Possibly because I use Buffer a lot for you know my an analytics, and I would love to talk about it. So it's the same; it has the same features with other brands like Hootsuite, like I had mentioned. So you can have your post performance. You can you know discover the analytics for your post engagement, insight into your likes, how many likes you had, the shares, the comment. You can gauge the resonance of your content and identify high performing posts. They will show you the post, a buffer will show you the post that ranked well, you know, within the specified time that you just put in. So it will al allow you to analyze when your audience is most active. It will tell you your audience are most active on Sundays by 2 p.m. You know, that's something to refine your strategy. You know that on Sunday you have to post by 2 p.m. if you want to have engagement. All right. It will also allow you to optimize your posting schedules. Like I said, you can you can schedule all your one week posts, one month posts, as long as as much as you want on Buffer all at the same time, so that you don't have to be doing it manually every day. Audience Insight will provide valuable in information about the demographics of your audience to tell you the location of your audience, to tell you the age, the agenda, and it will just analyze everything you know the specific cities and countries that engage with your content it has the, that, cap that capability yes so you can understand the characteristics of your followers which will also enable you to make targeted and personalized content creation yeah content scheduling and optimization i have spoken to this already you can schedule your content and all of that um audience insight provides sure i made a mistake there all right so Buffer Analytics delves into post engagement metrics, offering insight into your likes, your shares, your comments. Yeah. And your audience insight, I have said this already. So for want of time, we'd want to wrap up this session at this point, but let's take a look at the key takeaways, you know, the things we have covered within this one hour of this training. We have been able to discover the pivotal role of social media as a catalyst for your brand growth, you know, your audience engagement and strategic communication, how social media can help position your brand for relevance, you know, in the midst of the entire noise in the entire space. We've also looked at how you can set clear objectives, understanding how you can understand your audience and how you can harness the power of data to drive the informed decision making. We've also looked at crafting compelling narratives through content strategy and how you can measure your progress with precision by identifying the key performance indicators. All right, I would love to leave one thought with you as we bring this session to an end. So that your commitment to innovation your commitment to adaptability and your continuous improvement is the secret to unmatched success. These, you know, three um, attributes is what will bring success. You're innovative, you're adaptable to changes, you know, and trends, and you're constantly improving. These are these are the things that will, you know, bring success to your social media endeavors. And now, if you want to get a different result today, ensure that you do not do things the same way you did them yesterday. You know, you tried out certain strategies, certain things yesterday, and you discovered that they are not working out. Why? Keep on doing it if you want to have a different result from what you had in the previous time. You have to adapt your content. You know, you have to 
bringing new strategies into how you do things so that you can have different results and moreover an improved or a better result from what you had yesterday. So at this point, I'll say thank you so much for joining this training. Um, it's nice having each and every one of us here. Thank you so much. And please, if you have any question, can you kindly share? So in the absence of, of questions, we, we can now bring this session to an end. Please know that this video will be available on our YouTube channel. And if you have questions while watching the video, kindly drop them in the comment section. We'll be very happy to answer your questions. Join us next time for another session and have a lovely day.